You're watching LMCC, your community TV. Welcome to The Pulse. Joining me today is Julie Shordahl, who is the CEO and Executive Director of St. David's, which is an amazing place for early childhood development, preschool, so many things, and that's what we're going to cover today. So first of all, Julie, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. I'm happy now, to be here. Tell me how you got started with St. David's, because it's a very interesting story. Mm, thank you for asking. Yeah. I have a long history with St. David's Center. My little sister, who is 50, has Down syndrome, and so she was born in the 60s when children with disabilities, children born with disabilities, were often institutionalized. And my parents, who really had five other children, really didn't know anything about um, the uh, about Down syndrome, started, you know, knew they were going to parent her, knew she was going to come home, we were going to love her, and needed a partner on the path. And they learned about St. David's Center, and St. David's was providing inclusive preschool at that time, at a time when, when preschool services weren't offered for children with special needs. So St. David's made its way into our family family's hearts by virtue of the fact that, that this organization so, so stepped into our lives and helped us figure out how to um, help Angie have all the opportunities she could have in her life. So long, long time I've known about St. David Center. I never dreamed I would end up working here many, many years later and then end up in the, in the CEO role. And you are just uh, celebrating your 30th anniversary with St. David's, so mm -hmm. congratulations on that. That's a really big deal. And you started after college. I did, yeah. So I, I, my degrees in education, I taught for a few years after college, and then really realized I wanted to be working more closely with um, families who had children with special needs. So I heard St. David's was hiring, um, starting a new home visiting program, and interviewed for the job, and um, had no idea how it would be a path in which I could learn and grow as a young professional and help the organization learn and grow throughout my career. It's been a wonderful career to be in a place that's growing and thriving and really serving the community in such substantial ways. Sure. And over those 30 years, from what you alluded to, not a lot of services available then. Now St. David's is amazing. It offers so many different things for the family. Mm -hmm. And why don't you touch on what those are, and specifically we'll end with the therapies. So yeah, we have grown. I mean, when I started in the organization, we were probably under a $2 million nonprofit. Our, our revenues now today are over $22 million. So that just kind of shows you the, the revenue growth. And, and what that means is really a service growth. So we've, we now serve over 3,000 children and families across the metro community. We have three core service areas, many programs in those three core areas. We remain an exceptional early childhood education center here at our, on our campus in Minnetonka, serve about three to 400 children kind of in, in any given year and children with and without special needs. So we have an inclusive preschool classroom just really meeting the needs of all children in that early education experience. Our second core area is called early intervention and treatment, and that's for children who are facing developmental challenges with the goal of intervening as early as possible so that we can see the best outcomes for those children. So that's a range of, of services, some on our campus here, some provided in homes and community sites throughout the metro area. It's anywhere from an autism, um, set of autism programs. We have served many children on the autism spectrum to um, a pediatric therapy clinic, occupational and speech therapy. We have a really robust mental health um, d division here. So. Um, uh, children and family mental health. So we have a clinic on site where we provide children's mental health and then therapists who are co-located in schools, in Osseo and Hopkins schools in Carver County and providing services really at um, in partnership with, with child care centers and other organizations across the metro area. Um, serving over 800 children just in that area of mental health. 
and then we have foster care. All of that is in this set of early intervention programs and home visiting for families who are, um, who are young parents and really learning their parenting um, early on and have some, some trauma in their own history. So this set of programs really with the goal of intervening as early as possible. And then our third set, our third pro um, program area is our disability services. So families who have children with special needs and who, as they um, age into adolescence and young adulthood have asked us to stay alongside them. And we have done so through a, a unique set of in-home programs and some supported living and therapeutic recreation for those adolescents whose special needs are enduring and with them for a lifetime. And about 600 children or adolescents and young adults are served in that set. So this really lovely range kind of across the lifespan from very early intervention to just some young adult services to support people with disabilities. Yeah, that need help. And mm -hmm. uh, what I'm so interested in is like all the way out to Carver County to the St. Paul, Minneapolis. And we're going to talk mm -hmm. about downtown Minneapolis because you were granted, um, you received the big blessing of being one of only 30 nonprofits mm -hmm. that applied to be associated with a space for downtown, is it Westminster Presbyterian Church? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So congratulations on that Thank because you. that is really a big deal. Why don't you tell us about that? process when it's opening and what we can expect. Wonderful. Yeah, we, um, we had just basically finished a renovation and expansion at our main campus in Minnetonka and we heard about this opportunity. We were actually invited into it by Westminster Presbyterian Church. They are um, adding on to their campus in downtown Minneapolis and they, um, as part of their Open Doors, Open Futures campaign, decided that they wanted to invite a nonprofit um, community serving organization into their space. And so they did their own search and looked at 30 different nonprofits and really evaluated what they were looking for in terms of the kind of organization and that organization's um, you know, uh, substance and its, its quality. And, and they decided to invite two nonprofits to submit a formal application. So St. David Center was one of the two nonprofits invited in last fall um, in 2016. And, um, and so we submitted our application, and as we put that application together, a vision just so beautifully came together to create a center um, for child and family well-being for young children and their families who have faced adversity and where trauma has been part of their experience and it's really impacted the parent-child relationship and it's impacted the child's development. development also, yeah. yeah, so we submitted our application, we were chosen. So in fall of 16, we learned that we were chosen and, and we started down this path with Westminster of planning our space that, that would be dedicated partner space for us, um, meeting architects and planning it, starting a campaign to raise the funds to, to um, do the build out and equip the site. And, um, and we'll be, we're, we're just finished, just got our keys this morning, are finished the, the um, build out and we'll be moving in through the month of February and starting services in March. And you'll be serving several hundred children to start with just d in downtown Minneapolis. We will, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Our, you know, because we have staff located all across the community providing services, many of our staff have said that their families would like to access some of our center-based services, for example, our pediatric therapy. And um, being in Minnetonka, we're not on a good bus line. So to just be right in, in on 70 bus lines right in the middle of downtown is just a perfect opportunity to serve families who, who with whom we want to be within reach. Yeah our services. And it's a beautiful church. It is a beautiful church and the new building is spectacular. Yeah. yeah. Well congratulations on that. Now as far as fundraising, you've obviously been super busy this last year. Mm -hmm. Where are we at as far as needing funds in the process for fundraising? If somebody wants to donate, who do they call you? Do they call a fundraising person? How do they contact you? Do we, uh, we'll put a website up Great. and if you want to let us know what the website is phone number and okay. who they can contact. Great. So yes, we're in the middle of a fundraising campaign. So when we when we um, uh, put the build out plan together um, we, and the, the whole equipping list and all of that, it, we realized we would need about two million just to um, build and equip the site. And we decided to go ahead and raise multi-year operating as well so that, that the services would be supported right. through multi-year operating. So we have a four and a half million dollar capital and capacity building campaign. 
for the center and we're about 2.1 million into that campaign. So, so we you could use another 2 million to reach that goal for that particular campaign. Yes, we campaign. could. Yeah, yeah, and our goal would be to reach it as if possible by the end of 2018, maybe a little bit into 2019, but we're really running at our fundraising in in this um, calendar year. And absolutely, donors can call us at, at our number at 952-939-0396 and either ask for myself or Maureen Walsh, who is our Chief Advancement and Strategy Officer. Okay, and who, are you also in charge of the fundraising campaigns? Yeah, as a CEO, yeah. you know, you always Overseeing, are. Overseeing, yes. yes. Um, and my, my dear partner and um, very, um, very capable colleague at running campaigns is Maureen Walsh. And she's, okay. she's working with a committee, a really dedicated committee of volunteers who are very... Are doing the fundraising. Absolutely. Yeah, very excited about this mm -hmm. project and are getting behind it in every way. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Well, that sounds fabulous. I know that we're going to be talking to Kara Benoit, and I know that she's going to discuss specifically the different therapies that we have for children mm -hmm. and you know the difference that that can make in their life um, so we'll touch base on that with her thank you Julie thank you a pleasure so and good luck on your fundraising campaign thank you so that, much that's a big deal and you have a beautiful center here so congratulations on that up next we'll talk to Miss Benoit mm -hmm. and we'll see you back here in one moment here's what's coming up on first responder TV I'll talk with the Three Rivers Park Police Chief Hugo McPhee Want to become a volunteer firefighter but don't know where to start? We'll learn all about the recruitment process and how you can make firefighting part of your life. We'll give you an update on scams that have been targeting citizens in the lake area. We'll head to the Mount Fire Department to spotlight their new auto pulse resuscitation system on Safety Source. First Responder TV airs daily on LMCC's Channel 12. Welcome back. I'm here with Kara Benoit, and she is the director of special therapies for children, which include, um, I guess the terminology is pediatric therapy. So, mm -hmm. Kara, if you can tell us exactly what that is and what that means. Yeah. Um, pediatric therapies in our clinic refers to two disciplines um, primarily, and we also interact with mental health services. But um, we're speaking to a team of occupational therapists and speech language pathologists um, or speech therapists. Occupational therapists work on um, a wide range of things that are sometimes difficult to understand, even for physicians and certainly for parents. But primarily, they're working on the development of fine and gross motor skills, and then how children interact and perceive their world through their sensory-based systems. So how they hear, smell, um, feel things within their world and process that information. Um, and speech therapists work on communication, um, which most people think of kind of how you produce sounds and how you use your words, but it's broader and bigger than that. It's also about understanding and using language and how you have social interactions with the people that are around you that are important to you. Sure. Now, one of the most important things is diagnosing or noticing that there might be some sort of developmental issue mm -hmm. and so can you speak a little bit about what we're looking for what ages certain things might show that we might need to actually maybe have something diagnosed or checked or provide some extra support for the children of course I, I think it's a it's a broad range development, you know, occurs from even um, prenatally before birth and then comes all the way through the lifespan. Um, but we are focused on early intervention. And so we're trying to catch kids as early as possible to figure out what factors might be happening that are impacting their development. So for example, for our infant home visiting team, that might be, uh, again, prenatal, but right at infancy. Um, for most of our speech and occupational therapy um, services, um, the heart of what we do is um, between the ages of three and five um, during the most kind of critical and rapid point of developmental skills. Um, not to say that before that the stage hasn't been set, um, but we want to capitalize and help them growth during, grow during those critical periods. We know that developmental domains are kind of interrelated, so kids don't just learn to walk in isolation from learning to talk or, you know, learning to eat. So all of those skills are impacted by a lot of different um, things like their cognitive skills, their motor skills, um, and what's critical, probably the top of that list are their social-emotional skills and how they are able to interact in the world. 
So we have a team approach so that we can look at those skills across several domains. Um, and so it's not just what's happening in one area, but what's happening across all their development areas and how can we view that differently to see what might be impaired or where they might have strengths or areas that they need support in. What might a parent be noticing that would prompt them to get a hold of St. David's Center? What, at what age and what might they be noticing that they're thinking, I, I might need to get some sort of help here? Yeah, it's a great question. If you have parents that are really, we call it attuned, so if they're checked in even with their infant at a really young age, sometimes their gut response is that there's just not something right here. I smile at you and you don't smile back, or you're fussy and I try to help you calm and you're not calming well and I can't figure out why yesterday this approach worked to help you calm down and today this doesn't. Or I noticed that you were doing this for a couple of days as an infant and now I don't see it anymore. Um, Often though it doesn't come until, you know, um, children are a little bit older so that parents are kind of watching for those developmental milestones that their pediatrician and their friends and other people in the community are helping guide them. So it might be, I'm not hearing those early first sounds at 9 to 12 months and I'd like you to be trying to use those first words or first sounds or you're not um, beginning to crawl and that concerns me. Um, but what we find is usually if parents feel that they have some kind of gut response to this doesn't quite feel right, that they're usually right and the questions that they're asking may not be um, the perfect question to ask, but it guides us to ask them additional questions and help them investigate. Sure, sure. And then what have you seen and what do you experience when, it, hopefully in a perfect world, it's diagnosed very early and I don't know if we want to touch base on that in part B of this question, the difference between early catching and early help versus later. Um, what differences have you seen that it can make these special therapies that you do have for the special needs children? Yeah, as I mentioned, if caregivers are really attuned, then they notice these difficulties. If they're not, or if they just don't understand what they're seeing, um, early intervention is critical because, again, we're looking at supporting their relationship across all areas of development. So if parents aren't understanding that, then children um, sometimes develop what we call maladaptive behaviors. So they, um, a parent does something, a child does something in return. And if that behavior isn't meaningful and get what they want, then they'll develop behaviors like a tantrum or a pulling out of that relationship that doesn't allow them to continue to develop the other skills that come before or after that skill or come around it. So if children do not receive early intervention, then later on what that looks like or what typical people would refer to as big negative behaviors. So they might be fairly explosive, they might avoid tasks, they might have trouble paying attention, they might have big tantrums. So when we don't see early intervention come on board, um, those types of behaviors start to emerge and then it really impacts relationship. So then further development doesn't occur because your developmental partners, your teachers, your parents aren't alongside you because they don't understand those behaviors sometimes. Sure. and then that's their only way if they don't learn something different from coming here to cope then yes. that's the only mm -hmm. thing that they know to do that and that's frustrating for everybody. Right, we're yeah. trying to set the stage and build success as early as possible so that they can all feel good about that yeah. development. Yeah. Well that sounds pretty wonderful and how uh, how is the special area that you um, are in charge of going to be just expanded, same program, is it going to be different for the new location that's going to be in, in Minneapolis? Yeah, we, it will be um, slightly expanded, not in terms of just overall number of children served, but probably in terms of the complexity of the families. Um, as Julie mentioned earlier, we're on a bus line and we're in a different yes. demographic. So we're hoping to reach families that sometimes we can't and don't serve well in Minnetonka because of just accessibility. Um, with that, we um, know that there will be some complexity. So families that have experienced poverty, children that are experiencing trauma or abuse, um, a neglect and so our therapists will have a broad range of expertise to kind of address that complexity that is slightly different than a child who may have a more typical experience and have developmental delays. 
Um, and so we're supporting kind of a bigger picture for these children and families. And so um, our services have to be more coordinated so that we're able to provide them access to everything they need. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for the work that you do. You're obviously a big blessing to families who come here and need the services at St. David's. So I thank you very much for that, and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, this is Jennifer Ray wishing you a great month, and please check out the website for St. David's. Fabulous place and another gem in our community located right here in Minnetonka. Until next time, Godspeed. Thanks for watching.